Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to talk about in this video is, is your Wi-Fi li-fi li 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 to you about its speed? And no, it's not. You just have to really kind of understand a little bit more about how Wi-Fi works. So one of the biggest complaints that I see is people say, well, the access point says that it can do this much speed, but I don't get this. You got to set marketing aside because Wi-Fi is about physics and design and maybe a little bit of, of art sprinkled in there, right? So let, let me first uh, explain to you just five quick things to keep in mind. When you deploy Wi-Fi, if you're going to do it with more than one AP or even one AP, you have to keep some things in mind. And if, if you don't have some basic Wi-Fi design knowledge, you could end up with a very bad experience on your Wi-Fi. So if you're gonna if you're gonna deploy a system and you're gonna have multiple access points, you definitely there are several things you have to do. And I'm gonna create a video covering that as well. But I'm gonna give you like I said, just a few quick things here and then I'll kind of ex explain it. So First of all, when you're looking at your access point, uh, the speed that you see, the the main thing that you see, your transmit and your receive, receive or your physical rate, that is the actual link rate. Pretend that there's a pretend that there's an Ethernet cable between your phone and a switch, and it's the physical connection speed. Now, as a rule of thumb, I tell people you're going to get 50% of that or less. And we typically tell people if you get between 40 to 50%, consider that uh, a good day. Uh, if you have one device that's connected to the access point, you're not sharing that with anyone else, you're going to have better, better speeds. So first of all, that physical connection or the receive transmit, vendors are showing it different ways. That physical connection, a good rule of thumb, divide that in half, and that's probably the most you're ever going to see out of that device. The next thing you have to remember is that Wi-Fi is half duplex, right? So we're not sending in, in its current state, Wi-Fi is half duplex. So we send, and then we wait, and then we receive. We are not sending and receiving at the same time. The other thing is, airtime so right your wi-fi is a shared physical transmission medium uh, so all the devices that are connected to that ap have to have attention from the ap which takes up resources which is why we always talk about the the first thing is we always talk about like yes your ap can do eight or 16 uh, ssids but should you if you have requirements and you're in an environment that that mandates that Yes, if you can use, you know, WPA Enterprise and you can authenticate different ways or you can use private pre-shared keys, um, then you have one SSID, which is uh, going to pull less resources from the AP. So we talked about the physical rate. That's a theoretical maximum that you're never going to get because Wi-Fi is half duplex. Uh, the other thing is the airtime, you know, things are taken up by overhead and management traffic, acknowledgements, beacons, error correction. All of those things are going to eat into the bandwidth. If you don't have your Wi-Fi tuned for broadcast and multicast traffic, that's going to eat up. Broadcast traffic will eat up a ton of airtime, and that's going to reduce the amount of bandwidth available to connected clients to use right the signal quality affects the the efficiency if the if you don't have a great connection the device could drop to slower modulation rates uh, um, you can have retransmits of data and all of that is going to reduce the actual speed and remember every device is sharing the airtime of that of that access point so the more clients, the more interference, the more noise, um, that divides up the bandwidth and it's going to slow things down. So Wi-Fi is nice to have, 
but it's not something that you can just throw APs into the air and hope for the best, right? There, There's planning and design and study and then tweaking that has to be done to do that. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you an example here. Let's head on over to the machine. So you can see here that I've got my Google Pixel 8. It is connected to my U7 Pro Max, which is back here. And I am using, um, I am using WPA3 only. You can see here it says it has a poor experience. Uh, we're connected at uh, two by two. And it's funny because I had that sitting on my desk and you just saw that go from poor to excellent, right? Uh, it is using Wi-Fi 7. Now, you can see over here that we've got 0% uh, retries at the moment. We're on Wi-Fi 7, 2x2. Two two. We've got a good uh, AP client signal balance. But here, my transmit rate and my receive rate, um, and hold on just a second. I also just did the latest Windows 11 update, and I think Microsoft could screw up a one-car funeral. Anyway, back to this. Here you can see that my uh, receive rate and my transmit rate, now they're fluctuating because I'm getting poor. I've got all kinds of Wi-Fi going on here, so I guarantee you that I have that I have some interference and some things happening. But right here you can see that my transmit, my receive rate, these are my physical rates uh, to the access point. This is where they're at. So if I pull up a speed test, now this could switch back over to, okay, so now you see I'm at 2.4 gig each way. I've got my speed test pulled up here, my internal speed test, which is uh, gigabit to from, from the AP to the speed test server. Now, I told you if we get 40% of this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to consider this a good day. So I'm going to run this test right here. I'll put you over on the big screen. So it just dropped to 2.16 on the receive and 2.4 on the transmit, I'm gonna run this test. And to that server, I'm now getting 660-ish on the download, 650.98 on the download, and I'm getting, I had a gigabit upload, now I'm down to like 991, right? So let me show you this. So even though I have that physical connection rate, you can see, I was happy with this 650. Now, I'm not going to get that with multiple devices. Uh, of course, I know somebody's going to say, well, what about, what about, you know, multi-user um, uh, MIMO, right? So uh, multi-user, yes, it allows the access point to, to talk several, you know, to several devices at the same time making things more efficient. But the more devices you put on an access point, the more strain you put on an access point, the more you're going to see those numbers go down. So no, your Wi-Fi isn't lying to you about its speed. You just have to look at the numbers and figure out how to um, make more efficient use of either the access points, the spectrums, spread things out because it's it's you can't you can't beat physics. Sometimes we think we're beating physics, but we we can't beat physics, right? We do some things that manufacturers are like, ah, don't show people that, right? Because then that sets a bar. And you should really, anytime you're deploying Wi-Fi at scale or even in your own home, your small office, you still have to be considerate of all of these things that can affect how your performance is going to work. And as much as people would like to think that it's magic, when it works correctly, it is a lot like magic. I'll give you that. But when it's not deployed correctly and you have all kinds of, of inconsistent issues, that makes it much tougher. A good example, we're doing a Wi-Fi deployment where there's going to be uh, access points for a, a point of sale and access points for the public. Now, obviously, we're trying to get the point of sale company to be 2.4 gigahertz only. Then we will limit our access points to 5 and 6 gigahertz only. But part of that issue is it's in a steel structure with heaters on each side of it, right? So we do a, a basic 
heat map. We actually do a, a physical walk around with nothing without the heaters running. And then we will turn on all of the heaters and see what happens. And we will make adjustments based on that because we are going to plan for kind of worst case scenario. We'll end up with some sort of a modified plan that gives us the, the best usage of the Wi-Fi when the heaters aren't on. And then when they are on, you know, we're going to make sure that we don't have issues. So if you've got questions about this, if you've got comments about this, let me know down below. Tell us some of your stories about how you figured out that you were having issues with your Wi-Fi and how you corrected those. You can leave those there. Or you can head on over to the community and, and post over there. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and share. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with affiliate links, a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, if you need someone to put their eyes on your Wi-Fi and help you make things work more efficiently, if you need wired networking, security, voice over IP, storage, all those things, head on over to willyhow.com, fill out the contact form that's on the front page, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Like I said, come either comment here or come on over to community.willyhow.com and join the conversation. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.